entity has hit a nerve with a lot of you, so I'll be interested to hear what that's about as we go through. We have been getting great turnouts, but this one booked up the quickest of all the sessions. So welcome, and I hope you get a lot from the session. I wanted to start by asking you, first of all, as you booked on this session, who here, by a show of hands, has had a go at defining their personal brand identity already? Okay, so just a few people, thank you. So interestingly, Forbes did a survey and apparently 15% of us have uh, defined our personal brand identity. So of those that said yes, who here feels they live their personal brand identity? Okay, so a couple have said yes, well done to you. For those coming in, feel free to come up, there's space at the front. <laughs> okay, and according to Forbes, only 5% of us actually live our personal brand identity. So what does that mean? That means you've got a fantastic opportunity here. Because as we're going to see, your personal life brand identity is your foundation of success. So if people aren't thinking about it, they aren't defining it, and they aren't doing it, then what if you did? What might that do for you? So we're going to take you through what it's all about. And I just want to get a quick show of hands of who here would like to be more successful than they already are. <laughs> OK, who here doesn't like putting their hands up? <laughs> So that's what we're all about today and um, one of the things that's important to remember is that it doesn't matter whether you're employed or self-employed, have your own business, your personal brand identity is key and with your own business it's essentially going to be an extension of who you are and that's where the best businesses work because your values, your passions, everything aligns and that's going to be much more successful. So hopefully we've got a great mix of self-employed business owners and people working in, within organisations. And you can all get something from the session. So personal brand. What brand is this? Red Bull. Red Bull, yeah. And it's been through a rebrand. What does it represent to you? Go-getter, yeah. Maleness. Maleness. <laughs> fight. <laughs> fight. Fight. Energy. Energy. Powerful. And interestingly, those are all words you could use to describe a person. So a go-getter. They've got fight, power, energy. And that's because marketers are smart. They use personal characteristics to help define their brand so that they speak to their target customer. And when they do that, then there's a connection and they get what they want. It's exactly the same when we look at you. So who knows who this lovely lady is? <laughs> Katie Hopkins. Katie Hopkins. And what's her personal brand? <laughs> Controversy, fear, and she has carved out a niche for herself, hasn't she? So I suspect when this morning feels the flagons, uh, ratings are flagging, who do they call to get on? Katie Hopkins, and suddenly it's viral. Everybody's talking about it. What has she said next? So she's created a very strong identity by her brand that attracts the work that she wants. Then we've got the other side of it, <laughs> Ant and Deck. So what's their brand? Cheeky, Cheeky fun, 
approachable, the every guy, everybody loves them. And they have, you know, they come across as so natural, don't they? But how hard have they worked to craft their brand? I mean, they even stand in the order of their names. You never see them <laughs> anything other than out and deck. Yeah, so it's not just something that we uh, think can happen without effort. There's something that, that goes into it. So myself and Lisa are going to take you through the session today. <laughs> and Lisa is an absolute pleasure to work with. Um, she's been one of the, the biggest uh, bonuses I've got from doing this, has been working with Lisa. <laughs> and what Lisa represents to me is somebody who is really focused on you. She will do anything for you to help you improve, to help build your business, and her loyalty and the way she goes the extra mile is just unbelievable. And one of the little, very simple things Lisa does is after she spends some time with you, you know, we've met for coffee, you'll get a text from her and a lovely little photo, an image that just gives you a little boost to your day. And Lisa's business is helping you build businesses by networking. So if you're struggling with building your business, she's the person that can really help that. And she's made me see networking in a whole new way because Lisa's approach is genuine, authentic, and she has really challenged my whole view of it. And you'll be getting to see her specialty in the next session, which will be great. So I'm gonna hand you over <laughs> to Lisa. Well, thank you very much, Sinead, for saying that. And it's nice when someone else is able to describe what you're like in such a positive light. And we're going to try that today. And um, not only do you need to know um, about how you present yourself, but what other people say about you when, when you've gone and whether your projection of your personal brand identity is, is getting across. So I have the great pleasure of introducing Shania to you now. You've seen her in action over the last three sessions. And when I first met Shania last year through Lean In, I was bowled over by her ability to get to the heart of the problem. And she is very, incisive she knows um, when you're um, not being true to yourself she knows how to ask you questions that are going to help you break through whatever's holding you back even if you don't know that yourself and she inspired me to um, challenge myself on the barriers that I have because I, I moved back here after 20 years living away and she had helped me to see how I could um, overcome some of the negative thoughts I had about breaking into a brand new area. And that's what she does. And she holds you to account in a very inspiring way. And that is an extension then into her business because she's a breakthrough coach. She helps you break through barriers to help you get the promotion you want, to help you um, overcome whatever's holding you back in your career. And so I'm delighted to be working with, with Sinead and um, her Rise and Shine, which encourages you to get up and to shine. And that's what we're going to spend some time looking at just now. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit emotional after that. So thank you very much. That was really kind of me to say. Um, and it's great to be, for people to be able to understand who you are and what you're about. And that's what we're aiming for today. So we're going to give you the building blocks to do that. So here is Louise, and she was a client of mine. And when we first started to work together, she was 
basically faceless. Nobody knew who she was, nobody knew what she was about, and she blended in to the background, which would have been fine if that's what she wanted. But in her role, she wanted to stand out and she wanted to climb to the top. And that's very difficult to do if nobody knows that, if nobody knows who you are and what you want to do, and if nobody knows what you stand for. So that's why your personal brand is so important. And it's interesting, we were chatting to a couple of the guys in here before we started and um, asked them about their personal brand. And said, oh, I don't have one of those. Well, that's not true. We all have a personal brand. You just don't know what it is. You haven't defined it yet. So my guess is if you've not got the success you wanted yet, it's because your personal brand isn't defined and you aren't putting that out there in what you do. Okay, so Tom Peters says that we all need to be the head of our own companies. So we're marketing ourselves, brand me. And that sounds like quite a grand statement. But when you think about the people that make impact on you, that's because they're comfortable with who they are, they know who they are, and they know what they're putting out there. What do they have that we don't? Well, probably confidence, an understanding of what they want, an understanding of who they are, what, where they want to get to, and how to put that across. And are they successful and confident or in that way? What do you think? No, no. It's a learned behaviour. Some people are lucky to learn it as children and it's nourished and uh, they go with it. Others, like myself, have learned it much later in life. So I've shared this before, there was a time where I wouldn't have spoken up in a meeting, never mind stood at the front of the room. So if I can go from that to this, then I'm pretty sure every single one of you here can learn the tools for confidence. So why do we need it? It's what gets you noticed. So maybe you're not being noticed for the right things yet. <coughs> We're going to help you think about well, what it is you want to be noticed for. It's how people remember you. Like Lisa said, what do people say about you when you leave the room? And are they saying the things that you want them to say? And that may be, you know, they may be saying positive things, but is it what you want to be known for? It's what gets you the promotion you want. So being noticed for the right job. So I worked with a guy who had a really strong personal brand. It was so strong that when he went to change career and get a promotion within the same company, but in a different, on a different career path, he was laughed out of the place because they just couldn't see him in that position. But with a bit of work, he rebranded and now he's there and he's moved up. So it's possible we just need to focus on what we want. It's how you get the work you do or you don't want. So if you're getting lumbered with lots of stuff that you don't want, what are you putting out there? And it's where your confidence comes from, as I said. So Lisa's going to talk to you about what it is, so what makes up your personal brand. So I, I think the best way of thinking about it that you're going to take away is, is this quote from Jeff Bezos about it's what people say about you after you leave the room. And we've all done it, haven't we? We've been to a meeting at work and then we'll go and tell our colleague, I've just been there meeting with so and so. They're really good. They're really reliable. Oh, they were late again. Oh, they didn't come organised. They were so disorganised with their. They hadn't done any of their actions, and 
that's all part of your personal brand because that's what's being talked about you. It might be they are so on the money, they're gonna go far. So what is that? What is that that makes a strong personal brand? Have a look at these images and hopefully you can see them at the back. Probably the easiest way to think about a personal brand and one that's strong, whether you like them or not, that's another question. But have a look at these pictures here and that just at your table. Have a think about who has a strong personal brand. What is it about them that makes them successful or notorious or infamous or whatever it may be? And there's some people up there who've maybe had a rebrand. And there's some people up there whose brand has led to their downfall. So have a chat at your table about the elements that you think make up a strong personal brand.